the Atlantic Ocean, just off the coastline of Mull, northwest of Scotland. And I'm here in search of shellfish. Below the hull of this boat, there is a place that's home to a plethora of extraordinary creatures. Beneath the surface of our lakes, seas and locks, there's an underwater world that has sustained us for centuries. That is a lot of velvet crab. And for the people who live along the 19,000 miles of our iconic coastline, fish on. fishing is their life. We've got a hell of a system coming in. I'll be meeting these dedicated men and women whose oh, office yeah, 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 is yeah. the ocean. That's an extraordinary fish. It's like a dinosaur from the sea, isn't it? There's a nice one there. Oh, no! I feel so <laughs> inadequate. <laughs> and following their catch from port to plate. Is there anything you haven't battered? But life at sea can be both incredible... Hello, thank you. Whoa, Look just when you thought it couldn't get any better. ..and perilous. <laughs> I'll be searching for old favourites. That's a beautiful cod. To some absolute sea monsters. I just thought it was fisherman's tail. No, that really is a giant. So join me as I tramp and camp along this wonderful land of ours. How is that for a fishing backdrop? And go fishing from coast to coast. It really is a magnificent place, the British Isles. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you one of the single most beautiful places on Earth, Scotland. Where more than half of all our fish is caught. I've been fortunate enough to travel to so many countries around the world, doing various shows. I'm always asked, what's your favourite country? And the answer's always the same. It's Northumberland and Scotland. I'm starting my Scottish adventure just off the west coast, on the UK's fourth biggest island. Oh, welcome to Mull Robson. And relax. Well, just when you thought the views couldn't get any better, will you look at that? Wow, look at that! The fate of these small West Coast communities is completely bound up with fishing. If you don't catch, you go hungry. They write about it, sing about it, and eat lots of it. And if you come here and you're feeling a bit peckish, there's one thing you've got to get. A creature that this place is famous for. And that is lovely, luscious lobster, fresh off the boat. I want to catch a lobster for myself, so I've been told where to find one of those tough old beasts of the sea, by which I mean a local fisherman who'll take me to the lobsters. This has to be our fella. Johnny Lamont, I presume. How are you? It was a mm. bit breezy. You know, was, was, is it coming from the east or the west? It's from the east, southeast. Now, when I go fishing on the northeast coast, they always say east is least and west is best. Is that true? Yep. Same for the place, same for the weather. There's an old rhyme. And it goes, when the wind's in the south, he feeds many a mouth. But when the wind's in the west, the fishing's the best. Love it. There was a woman from China. She went to sea on a liner. She broke her neck, she fell on the deck, and now she can see behind her. <laughs> With the wind up, we'll be heading out into choppy water on Johnny's boat. So preparation is everything. I know it's not the same as Johnny's, but, you know, I'm trying to look the part. Does my bum look big in there? How are you? Like many fishermen around here, Johnny runs a one-man operation. Johnny, do you not fancy upgrading to something like that? You get a lot more lobster on something like that. So the stakes are high. 
If his lobster pots are empty, he's ruined. He's out from six in the morning every day, and he must come back with a boat full of shellfish, or the numbers just don't add up. How's it looking? And just like that, he is our first lobster. But sadly for Johnny, he's a tiddler. Though he's got the heart of a lion. This crusher's got on you, you've got to watch that. Now, he's obviously not big enough, no? no much too small. Size. Chuck him back. Chuck him back. In order to maintain the lobster population, regulations prevent Johnny from keeping the smaller ones that aren't old enough to breed. Ah, and that's what we're looking for, Johnny. Now we've started. That's a good size lobster. Don't even that's, need to measure that. That's a beauty. That's the measure. Right. And um, that's to come to the end of the shell there from the back of the eye socket like that. Right. And that's well inside. Lobster used to be the preserve of posh restaurants. It's now a staple in budget supermarkets but the standards are high and maintaining stocks is vital. Just drop it. It's not just the backbreaking work, it's a test for tougher minds than mine. Get the next one ready. I don't know which the next one was. And again. I don't know how Johnny does it. I've got to keep reminding myself Johnny does this on his own. I can barely keep up myself. Does this not want to make you have a deckhand? Now, your silence speaks volumes, Johnny. As we head out to the second line of creels, hoping for a better lobster to hard work ratio, I can't help but admire Johnny, a sprightly 70 year old and his daily solitary battle with the creels, the fickleness of fishing, and of course, the weather. Yeah, there's been a few tense moments. I lost the boat once. Well, you're alive to tell the story, and that's good. Over there. It was January, and I was hauling the creels. A long, oily swell just threw up a 15-foot-high pillar of water. And you were on your own? Yes. Oh, my God. Well, apart from the dog. I had the dog with me. Is the dog all right? Yeah. Oh, I love a story with a happy ending. Man's best friend. Oh. The boat got capsized and we had to swim for shore. I mean, it was only, what, 150 yards or something. Uh, yeah, but only 150 yards? Your boat it took, capsized. It took me 20 minutes. When I did eventually get ashore, she looked at me and said, this is a hell of a day to give me a bath in it. <laughs> Out here, the margins between success and failure, even life and death, are so fine that fishermen are a superstitious bunch. It all reminds me of the tale of Jonah, whose terrible luck in the Bible makes his crew throw him overboard, only to be rescued by a whale. Dinner is served. I had a good feeling about this line. When your luck's in, it's in. And I think we've had plenty today with the catch we've netted. Must be my lucky pants. Hey! Three lines in, two lobsters, one giant brown crab, and lots of velvet. Fingers crossed the luck continues, because if you thought lobster fishing looked tricky, wait till you see the job we've got when we get to shore. So you know those nightmares where you get chased and you can never get away and you wake up with your heart racing? Well, sorting the catch and getting it onto the last ferry is pretty much like that. Except you're awake and you're surrounded by hundreds of tiny monsters. Right. Let's drop down. You then drop down. So, now lift it up. There you that go. is a lot of velvet crab. It's like herding cats, except they're crabs. All the local fishermen pitch in to this race against time to sort a week's worth of catch and send it off for sale. There's just a two-hour window before the ferry to size, price 
and pack this ever-moving cargo. So, how have we got to sort them? In various sizes, or is it just small and large? It's small and large. Small and large. Johnny, I haven't got a ruler, so in your eyes, what is large and what is small? That's small. Those are small. That's, bo small. that's borderline. Measurement-wise, borderline, so... 75 it, mils across the shell. Is, is that is small? Sort of official size for large. Two and a half inches. Two and a half Three inches. inches something like Three that. inches. Three um, inches. 75 is about three and a half. I wish I had a ruler. Is that small? That's small. Good. Imagine going through this lot with a gauge. <laughs> we'll be here till it's dark and I've grown a beard that small. There's a certain element of risk involved. You know, in the drama game, this would be defined as a stunt. Yep. Is this the large one? Large. OK, small. Velvets are also known as zippies because they move so fast. And devil crabs because they're so aggressive. Ow! He got me. He's got me. Oh, hilarious. I'm losing pints here. I'm bleeding. Where'd you go for your kicks? Any? <laughs> but they do taste nice in a sandwich. Throughout history, we've fallen in and out of love with shellfish. In Victorian times, it was fashionable. But before then, it was a poor man's food. But it's ironic, isn't it, that a while back, you know, shellfish were seen as the bugs of the ocean, the cockroaches of the ocean. Yeah. And now it's ironic that those people who shun these creatures are now paying top dollar for them. Crab is a great source of protein. It's good for you, and it's on your doorstep. Yum! Ooh, Did he get you? It hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. Luckily, the catch makes the ferry by the skin of its teeth. And there's another week for everyone's wounds to heal. Anyone got any plasters? Hemingway wrote The Old Man in the Sea about a fisherman's epic three-day struggle to catch a giant fish that nearly kills him. I've only done one shift on the lobster boat and I'm seizing up already. I honestly don't know how Johnny does it. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. OK, Robson. Yeah? When you're ready. OK. There's only one thing that will perk me up. A taste of some of that lobster we caught earlier. Ay, yay, yay. Ah! You must be the lovely Carla. Hello there. Hello, how are you? Carla, Johnny's wife, has offered me a cooking demo. Johnny's told me lots about you. He never shut up about you out at sea. Oh, okay. I wanted to talk about lobsters. He wanted to talk about Carla. Carla this, Carla that. Well, you and I can talk about lobsters. Great. Then. That'd be great. But first, I need to talk about your accent. You're obviously not born and bred, Mole. No, I'm a wild Canadian. Wild Canadian? Yeah, just came to work on Iona for six months, uh, yeah. about 26 years ago. Met this um, rugged Scottish fisherman, uh -huh. and he invited me for lobster dinner, so that was about it, really. So I've been up since half past three this morning, out with your fella, catching the lobster. What's the best way of cooking them, Carla? Well, you can, you know, poach them in butter the old-fashioned French way if you have a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, we go for the simple sort of um, pioneer way of boiling the lobster after you've dispatched it so it's humanely done. This is done by quickly running a knife into the head, which causes an instant death. Well, I've already got the water boiling here. Mm -hmm. We're going to boil them up, let them cool down slightly, and we're going to um, get the best of the meat out of them. So that leaves nine minutes cooking time for us to whip up some spicy mayo, fruity salsa, and tasty conversation. Do you like the fact that a lot of your ingredients actually, you know, comes from the port and goes to the plate, you know, from sea to tea kind of thing? Is that part of the kind of whole kind of package for you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's our ethos. I mean, it's the old way of doing things. You eat what's ready at the right time of year. We go foraging off the croft. Uh, Johnny catches things, brings them in. I cook them fresh. Um, not only is it 
like slow food and good for food miles and environmentally friendly, it tastes bloody good. That's music to my ears. We're so used to flying food in, but it's really all here. If not on our doorstep, then not far away. Okay, lobster coming out. Can't wait. I don't think it'll be blue anymore. Definitely not. No, I think we'll have a bit of a suntan if you ask me. Yes, it's all tropical. Looks like Johnny after he's been in the sun for a couple minutes. The old Scottish skin. One of the things that seems to put people off eating crab and lobster is getting through the shell, which can be a messy and even dangerous business. We've got a selection of kitchen safety eyewear. There's a bit, bit of an Elton John vibe going on. I feel like I'm in some kind of Salvador Dali sequence. Welcome to the circus is what I say. Pop it out with your fingers. There you go. Copying the expert, I managed to extract all of the meat for a delicious lobster salad. <sighs> Don't know about you, Carla, I'm famished. Oh. There we go. Right. The proof as the says and the tasting. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. Mm. It's sweet, it's succulent. Mm. It's got this beautiful, clean taste. That uh, minerally sea taste. Yeah. Amazing. After some fantastic fishing and delicious dining, I'm leaving the islands now and making my way inland. I'm heading from Oban down to the Trussocks near Loch Lomond. Oh, will you look at that view? The lovely Loch Lomond. I love this road. It's my most favourite in the world, I promise you. The A82 to the northwest of Scotland here is absolutely stunning. And even on a day like today, when the weather's bloody awful, it's still jaw-dropping. I'm going fly fishing, not for the ubiquitous trout that Scotland's famous for, but because I've had a tip-off about a secret location where I might catch, if I'm very lucky, one of the rarest fish in Scotland. The Arctic char is common in other parts of the world. This is me catching one in Iceland. They're beautiful fish, cousins of the salmon, with a distinctive pink underbelly. But the thing is, while they are common in the Arctic Circle, they're almost never found in the warmer waters of the UK. Here, it's like fishing for a unicorn. But there's one fisherman who's done it, or at least he says he has. There he is. Alex Allen, how are you? Robson. Robson. Nice to meet you. Good to see you, man. You too. How's things? Not too bad. Yourself? Beautiful journey here. Beautiful. It's, it's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely yeah. stunning. There's fish in them there hills. These two weapons should do the job. I must go on a quest to find this quasi-mythical fish. It's an epic trek. But then, nobody said a quest would be easy. Yeah, it's not a bad view, is it? It's amazing. These hills were owned by legendary outlaw Rob Roy McGregor, the Robin Hood of the Glens, who slept in the heather wrapped in his kilt. Luckily, I brought me tent. Right. It's the only tent I could get. I tried to get one of those camouflage tents, but I couldn't see one in the shop. Hey. The trek's taken most of the day, and we're miles from anywhere. Camping in the spot, nobody but Alex knows. I've snapped my tent pole. <laughs> you what? You've snapped your tent pole? Snapped my tent pole. Have you? You're not borrowing mine, sorry, mate. <laughs> one for all and all that. I tell you what, I'll light a fire for him to keep him alive till the morning, so he can show me where to fish. How long have you been fishing? Since about four or five years old. Four or five? Yeah, 30, yeah. 32 years now. 
The flies I'm going to use to try and catch the char were tied by my uncle Matheson, and he's the reason why I'm an angler. Uh, he took me fishing at the age of seven, and to this day, I'll, it's what got me hooked. 4.30 in the morning, we go down, we see a barn owl, we see an otter, we just see wildlife that I'd never seen before. And uh, he taught me to fly cast, and I caught a four pound wild brown trout at the age of seven. And that's a huge fish. That's a fish and of a lifetime. Absolutely, really. never since then I've been hooked. I'm going to adopt basically coarse fishing tactics. Coarse fishing? Are you going to use bait? I'm going to use bait, yes. Uh, goodness, I'm a purist man. <laughs> I'll use the fly. With fishing, strategy is everything. I'll trust my instincts and my Uncle Matheson's fly. Whereas I think Alex's bait is a sledgehammer to crack a nut. I'll see you in the morning. I'm off to hit the hay. Coarse fishing, maggots. I've never heard the likes. I'm off to bed. <clears throat> Where'd I put me pants? Night. It's 5 a.m. in our mystery location, and as fish are hungriest at dawn, it's time to get at them. And with any luck, fly fishing will win the day. And people wonder why you go fishing. It's not just about catching a fish. It's just being surrounded by solitude. You want to know what solitude sounds like? It's time for me to put my money where my mouth is and batter this one out. I'm hoping my tactics and years of experience will all fall into place. All right, I've caught a tree, but I'm not bothered. You've all done it. You've all done it. But all the fishing shows that you've probably been watching, you never see an angler do it because they get that embarrassed and they go to the director and the cameraman. Please don't show that because it just shows like I'm a bad caster. Don't care. Don't care. Oh, there's a bait there. And the right hand rod. Yeah. <laughs> Got a fish. Good man. Don't get too excited. Ah, <laughs> uh, brownie? Yeah. That's a start. It was a nice brownie. Good quarter of a pound. Where the trout is brown with coloured spots, the char is silver with a reddish belly. So we let it go to swim another day. Look at that. This brownie get its breath. Well done. What's well, a start. It's a good sign. They can only get bigger. Then, like bosses, they all come at once. Fish on? Yep, another one. Good man. Well, to Alex's rod, anyway. That's a lovely half-pound trout there. They're getting bigger. Another one. Not another one. Not that I'm jealous or anything. There's no place for foolish pride in fishing. Lovely little fish. Boat fishermen actually call their most hapless crewmates Jonah because their bad luck scares away the fish. And I'm starting to worry. Maybe I'm the Jonah. Oh, he's into another one. Another trout. It's because I lost my lucky pants last night, isn't it? I have not had a nibble. Yeah. That goose is just, just laughing at me. Probably because I'm on a wild goose chase. I just need, just need a charm now. <laughs> just need that charm. <laughs> they usually come in with the trout, so... Fingers crossed. Well, if one thing's obvious in the bait debate, it's that fly fishing isn't really working today for trout or char. Perhaps I need to eat some humble pie. Don't want to use bait. Don't want to coarse fish. But I'm gonna. If it means I'm gonna catch. Whatever means necessary. Could this be the character we're after? 
Yeah, it's a drop back. It'll be on. That's on. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a fish on. I'm into something here. Hey, Alex, this is my first fish on the maggot. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's small. Oh, if it's a char, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a trout. It's a trout. <laughs> it's, a... it's a wee trout caught on the maggot. That's a beauty. Still not a char. <laughs> You win some, you lose some. And like Jonah, I know my luck will come in, eventually. So you're not leaving, are you not? Not for a while, I'm gonna stick out and see if I can redeem myself. All right, you do that. Never to. If you do catch one, will you send a photo? Yep, of course. Because, you know, life's too short in my book. I've only got 20 <laughs> years left. Oh, hello. What's this? It's a video from Alex. Let's have a look. So give it a few more hours. Persistence eventually pays off. <laughs> he got one! I've had five of these guys today. This one being the best. They're not what you call giants, Alex. Dear me, I've seen bigger goldfish, buddy. Uh, they're pretty. They're definitely Arctic char. The white leading edges on the pecs gives it away in that lovely rainbow colour along its belly. Nice fish. <laughs> well done. And I wasn't there. Well, would you believe it? The unicorn fish does exist in the British Isles. <laughs> well done, mate. Well done. Arriving back in Oban, I couldn't wait to get back right. in the sea. Right. Put the Aquaman suit on. The views were amazing. So, this is a little shipwreck that sits here from the kind of 1920s. Wow, look at that. First, one old wreck. There's nothing worse than the image of an old fella looking tense on a paddleboard. And then another. All topped off by one of Oban's legendary treats. Can I be right? The fried ice cream? Yeah, we've got that today. A bit of a song. It's long and green and it looks obscene and it always has me burping. <laughs> but I must confess what I like best is a great big pickle gherkin. <laughs> hey! A massive sugar rush. To be honest with you, I thought I was going to say yuck. But that bad. is yummy. And all in time to catch my next boat down at the marina. I'm asleep. Lovely. Today, I've been invited on a fishing trip, but not one where I'm going to catch a fish for my dinner. Jane Dodd, I presume. Hi, good morning. How are you, Robson Green? Lovely to meet you. So, uh, what's the plan of action today? Well, we're going to get on the boat and get out as soon as possible, try and get you some skates. All right, let's go. Let's go. Amazing. Time to get our skates on, then. We're fishing for skate, but not the edible kind. We're on the hunt for flapper skate, one of the most endangered species on the globe, as rare and almost as large as giant pandas. And we're incredibly lucky that there are more here on the west coast of Scotland than anywhere else in the world. Jane's a marine conservationist, trying to save them before it's too late. We don't know everything about flapper skate anyway, and we're trying to learn uh, as much as we can about the different life stages. You know, it's all of us trying to learn about the species and protect the species for the future. Our mission today is to catch as many as we can so we can tag them and follow their movements. But it's easier said than done. They're gentle giants, six foot by six foot sea monsters, unchanged since the dinosaur days. What's the method? Are we using an electric reel to bring them on? <laughs> no. Please, no, we're not. <laughs> I've got a bad back, you know. Seriously, I'll show you my scars. So I'm doing all the work today. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I'm not going to reinforce the stereotype by the man doing all the work. Roger the Skipper is heading for Inish Island, where the deep trenches made during the Ice Age are the perfect habitat for the fish. Uh, Roger, we're dropping anchor. Yes. And judging by how long that thing's been going down, these fish aren't hiding out in the shallows. Oh, definitely not. How far down that's going? 170 metres. 170 metres? Oh, God. We're heading towards, what, 500, 600 feet? 
getting on for that. Oh my gosh. There's a saying in fishing, big bait, you're gonna get a big fish. I'm just trying to envisage what is gonna swallow that. It's like that Jaws moment, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the bait's set, it's flat, calm, it's quiet. All we have to do now is wait. It's all about patience, isn't it? Waiting game every time. Waiting. Yeah. Roger's been a fisherman and angler all his life and has seen the devastating changes caused by fishing. Ollapool, for instance, when I was up there, they used to do skate fishing up there. That used to be the sort of place to go for skate in the 60s and 70s. The fishing there has been just about wiped out with the skate. But in those days, anglers were bringing the fish in as a trophy. Mm -hmm. They were hung up on scales on the pier, weighed. And, and they weren't eating them, no? No, no, the, the, they've never really had a marketable value. And then after they'd been weighed, they were just dumped off the pier. In those days, there was always that, the old saying, plenty more fish in the sea, which we now know isn't really the, you know, the truth anymore. I think it's down to the sort of protection of everything on the planet. If you don't look after what we have, when it's gone, it's gone. Skate on. You think? Yep. You know. I know. We are in business. It's woken up. As is the way with fate and skate, you don't always get what you want. And our first catch is a thornback ray. Although confusingly, it is the fish we call skate when it's on the menu. So it is a skate, so we don't have any true rays in this country, but all the uh, shark-like flatfish like this are skate. So you see the big, the thick tail with the spines on? Sure. That's a skate. So the skate is released back into the sea. Whoa, 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 we, I think we've got something on here. Oh. Yeah, just tighten it up a bit, yeah? Let me get that back on. Oh, they're like buses. That one's yours. They're all yeah. coming at once. This is what we're after. Okay, Rog, let's get it in there. Oh, goodness, yeah, that's what we're, oh, bloody hell. Just need to bring it out of this sand, come on. Now, what I'm wearing might look like a sumo wrestler's nappy, but it's actually a harness to protect my back as I try and heave this enormous fish up from the seabed. Just to put a bit of a rocking into it. Big bait, big fish. I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. Just when everything was going so well, perfect conditions, fish on. Bloody starts to rain. And it's rain of biblical proportions. We've got a hell of a system coming in. At the mercy of the weather and the fish, I feel like the old man in the sea. Move over, Hemingway. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Roger, Jane. Oh, will you take a look at that it's creature? It's a female. It's a female. It's a female. That's more than a female. That's an extraordinary fish, man. That's certainly something they don't serve up in restaurants. But there's no time to admire our beautiful skate. She has to be scanned to see if she needs to be tagged or to see if she's been caught already. Then measured and photographed, all against the clock because she can only survive a few minutes out of the water. So they've taken photographs and... Is this one you recognised before? Uh, it isn't actually, but its no? spot pattern is quite unusual because it's only got these sort of four spots I the see back. them, yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. And do, does, do these creatures, have the, the spots, are they unique to this particular creature? Yeah, so it's like, like, like a, a fingerprint. fingerprint. So no other skate will have the same spot pattern sure. as this one. So if we can shuffle this underneath, that would be helpful, and then we'll get him a bit sure. off. Some skate, like this one, are caught more than once. But every sighting helps build a picture of where and how they live. Oh, are we putting her back? Yeah, time time to get her back in the water. She's yeah, been I'll out long enough. Yeah, all right, my darling, there you go. We know you've got a tag in you.
The data Jane and the anglers have been collecting has already made a difference. The waters here have been designated a marine protection area, banning commercial fishing and preventing skate from being caught up in trawler nets. And for the first time in 50 years, their numbers are on the increase. But isn't it incredible something like that yeah. resides here? fantastic. You just don't think, do yeah, you, no, that on your doorstep so is something as extraordinary as that. And, and its design just hasn't changed for millions of years, yeah. eh? Yeah. When people see them for the first time, that's the first thing they say. It's like a dinosaur from the sea, isn't it? Because yeah. they look so kind of prehistoric. Yeah. What a day. What an extraordinary day. How many people I know, when the sun's shining like this. It doesn't you, matter. You couldn't it's ask for a bit. It's sunshine, Roger. <laughs> you know, it's tears of joy. That's it. And Excellent. I just get it why you guys do the thing you do. Oh, it's, it's uh, very satisfying. Yeah, why this. wouldn't you want to protect something like that? Well, all fish, really. Not just skate. All fish, really, deserve protection of, as much as possible. My time in Western Scotland is almost at an end, and I've got one last chance to put some food on the table. I'm going to find one of the smallest, most sustainable fishing outfits you could imagine. They use a primitive form of hunting that allows you to look your prey right in the eye. I can't fail. Sean, Will and Jane Ann are Spearfish Scotland, a group that come together for the pleasure of free diving and foraging under the sea. And judging by the look here, well, you've been fishing all your life. <laughs> you've been spear fishing all your life. I am 100% into it. Yeah. Born with gills. Yeah. I'm from yeah. South Africa originally. I grew up kind of spear fishing, and um, it's only when I when I emigrated to the UK I discovered there's nobody diving around here. Because it's cold. It's excellent. It's absolutely excellent. It's look, it's better than South Africa. There's no sharks here, you know. So. <laughs> You hope. <laughs> Jen and what, what's our likelihood of catching today? There should definitely be some scallops. Scallops, scallops, scallops is good. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'll spear it like. I'll, I'll pick it up. We'll hand dive the scallop. We'll hand I'll get the scallops, yeah. And guys, page one of spear fishing in this part of the world. What's the one bit of advice you could give me? Uh, don't shoot him. That's good. I like it. Or yourself. Yeah, that's good. And uh, maybe dive away from me because I've seen you before. Like wherever you are, there's never fish around you. You know. So. <laughs> they fear me. They fear me. They fear me. My reputation in the local area is Jonah. His bad luck scares the fish away, but Jonah's luck changes, and I'm convinced that mine will too. Let's go. Let's get on them. Let's get at them. There are some vital safety rules with this kind of fishing. The first is never dive alone in case of any trigger-happy accidents. And second, as we're diving without scuba tanks, you must always leave enough breath to get back to the surface. Or you die. I can go down there 10, 15 meters and hold my breath for about 30 seconds tops. Just down there for a minute. I think Sean can extract oxygen from water. I'm sure he's got gills. So you've seen my technique. Any ways I can improve it? No, you're doing pretty well. I was just uh, kind of eye up an anchor spot before you go down and then get straight to it. Don't look around, just straight to the bottom. Ah, that's hold what on. you're doing. You, you... You're spotting where you're going to hold, yeah, and then you get onto that, OK. I'm hoping to catch some pollock, but on an overcast day like this, it's almost impossible to see them as they swim near the seabed. Well, short. I think the meal we'll be having tonight is Pollock's surprise. <laughs> the surprise being, there's no Pollock. This area is devoid of Pollock. It's Pollockless. <laughs> but uh, 
I'm sure we've got something in the fridge. If not, we've got the fishmongers. And now I'm very much aware of the third hazard of spearfishing, the risk of hypothermia, leading to mental confusion, which is putting it politely. I'm very cold now. Robson Green, news at 10. And with that, all dignity was gone, and we made for the shore. Luckily, my newfound friends covered for my lack of fish with a magnificent catch of scallops and oysters. They're huge. Wow. Are you going to shove them or are you just going to no, chuck, just them chuck them on? Like that, and then they, they cook inside the shells. Oh, of course. I think there's something incredibly atavistic about spearfishing. What I mean by that is it's kind of the calling of your forefathers. And you realise yeah. this is a method that has been going for centuries, yeah. Yeah. for thousands of years. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's, it's in our blood to actually hunt like that. It's serene when you're there because no, there's nothing else that matters. It's just your breath the environment where the fish are, and, and at one with nature. And perhaps most importantly, we fish for our food without taking too much or polluting the sea. I've had oysters, I think it's an acquired taste, but I've never had them this fresh. Mm. Here we go, down the chute. Mm -hmm. mm. Whoa! That was insane. So good. How's that oyster? That is amazing. This That's is amazing, isn't it? This is fine dining. Uh huh. Al fresco stuff. Uh, it really is. Uh, <laughs> you need pork. You need pork. Yeah. <laughs> I love scallops. <laughs> amazing. And they're all from there. You know, we've got silence. I don't think he's liking us. <laughs> no word of a lie, this is some of the best seafood I've ever tasted. Tell you what, what a perfect way to end an extraordinary day. How many restaurants have got a view like that? You only need to gaze out to this great blue expanse to remember that we're nothing but a drop in the ocean. Tiny compared to the awesome power of the sea. Next time, I'm in Pembrokeshire. Many you got, Alex, how many? Where I come face to face with these mythical beasts. Hello, matey. And I go in search for an apex predator. It's a big fish. You might need a bigger boat, you never yes. know. And Robson's back coastal fishing next Saturday at 7. Or if you can't wait till then, join him on his mammoth journey across Hadrian's Wall. Coast to Coast is streaming now on My5. Expect venomous snakes and mummies galore as we explore the Nile with Serrano Fines. Brand new next. <laughs>